Hi, my name is Scott Honey, and I'm a network presale specialist with the head based out of our Chicago headquarters. In today's demonstration, we'd like to show you integrating Cisco DNA Center and ServiceNow. These two solutions working together can greatly increase the accuracy of your configuration management database, as well as enrich incidents created automatically by DNAC with relevant information in order to provide as much detail as possible to your initial support step. We'll start the demonstration by jumping into DNA Center to highlight that our DNAC and SNOW instance have been integrated together. This is done by going to Platform, Manage Bundles, and we're going to search for everything that says basically ServiceNow. So we have our basic ITSM CMDB synchronization. We have our network issue monitor and enrichment for ITSM, as well as swim events for ITSM. After we've verified our integrations are working correctly, we'll review the device inventory in DNAC. This is an important step in order to compare the CMDB data received by ServiceNow. We'll jump to provision, device, and inventory and we're just going to pick on a management switch out of our headquarters. From here we can see the device name, device type, IP address, inventory, so the serial number, software, images. Uh, we can also take a look at the configurations itself uh, as well as the interfaces uh, that should be associated with the asset. After reviewing the device inventory, we'll review the current open issues detected by Assurance. Any open issues detected that match the event rules will create a corresponding network incident within ServiceNow. We currently have a known bad GLC-TE transceiver configured within our out-of-band network that should trigger such an incident. So from here, we're going to jump to Assurance, Dashboards, Issues, and Open Issues. So from here, we see we have a P3 priority for high input-output errors on a router interface. At this point, we'll jump over to ServiceNow in order to see what data DNA Center is providing to our ServiceNow instance and just how powerful this integration really is. The first thing we'll review is the CMDB updates we received from DNA Center, and we'll pick on that same management switch we reviewed in DNAC earlier. From within the device, we can see the description matches, the related items relate to the router interfaces, as well as all IP connectivity uh, seen by the asset. And then at the very bottom, we have our SVIs off the switch, as well as our switch ports and their relevant configurations. This level of automated CMDB integration is incredibly powerful in understanding the impact of changes or failures of specific assets within your environment. Lastly, let's jump over to Active Network Incidents and review what DNA Center has told ServiceNow about our current open issues. From here, we're going to pick on the very first incident. And we can see based on the short description that this lines up with the current P2 open issue for high input output errors. From here, I'm going to assign myself to the incident and mark it as in progress, update the tickets, Go back into it, and I'm going to start reviewing the Cisco DNA tab in order to see what data has been provided by DNA Center for this specific incident. Under the Network Details field, we can see the devices connected to the router experiencing the issue and the links associated with it. So here's the router. We can see our out-of-band management switch and the adjacent router across the DCI circuit. And then the links here specify the CMDB links within the database. And then under the event details and suggested actions, we can review the Cisco TAC recommended troubleshooting steps to try to remediate the specific issue. DNA Center is recommending we first review the show interface output, and then review the configuration of specific interfaces. And then action three is telling us if we see L1 errors, do the following, check the interface, check if the issues is with the patch panel, check the actual cable itself, or replace the SFP transceiver. 
And then action four, if we don't resolve the issue with the actions from step one, two, and three to create a tech support file and then open a Cisco tech case. Now, the last step we'll review is the Cisco 360 view link provided within the network incident. This link will send us back to DNA Center Assurance for this specific issue. So we're going to click on this Cisco 360 view link. And now from this device 360 view, we can review our device health and any events on a time sliced graph. We can see the time of day our issue caused the device health to drop. So we can see here around 2.30 a.m. and around 9.20 a.m. Uh, we experienced this issue. So we'll select the high input output error on interface gigabit ethernet zero listed under the bottom, which will bring up a troubleshooting panel from the right side of the web page. And then the suggested action items match identically to the event details and suggested action field in ServiceNow with one notable difference. We can now have DNA Center perform the first and second action items for us. So we're going to click on run for action item one and we're going to review the output. So we're looking at the show interface of Gigabit Ethernet 0. Scroll down here to the interface statistics and we're looking for errors. So we can see here we have 728,000 input errors, which obviously means there's a, a layer one issue of some kind. And then we're going to verify the interface configuration is compliant on the port. So we're going to run that as well. And we're going to take a peek. All right, so nothing out of the ordinary here. And based on the output that we saw from action item one, we can see we are experiencing the high input error count on the interface, and we should proceed with action three in order to get closer to the RCA of the incident. So here we'd reach out to our Colo facility's smart hands, make sure that the cable itself is fully inserted into the patch panel as well as the router. We might have them replace the patch cable itself and replace the SFB transceiver. If we still experience problems, then we'll gather at a Showtex support off the switch and then call Cisco Tech. So at this point, this concludes our demonstration. If you'd like to talk further about how AHEAD can help with integrating Cisco DNA Center and ServiceNow for you, please reach out to your client director or client solutions architect today. Thanks for your time, and we look forward to talking to you soon.